thought that um, we'll uh, continue with that sections, missive sections of different vessels. We have already done uh, general cargo carrier. We have done about talked about bulk carrier and OBO carriers. Uh, let us take a break today and look into some of the pictures, some of the photos, wherein uh, maybe you'll have little better idea about. Uh, those structural details, right. So to start with say uh, we have talked about uh, well uh, the general section when, whenever you have drawn we have seen it like this say a midship section you have the double bottom this is your um, say head side garter, right. And then here I showed one item like this, right, which I refer to as bulwark. This is called bulwark. There is nothing but a sort of a railing on the side of the uh, uh, along the ship because you will have to have some so called railing, so called protection, otherwise, you go overboard, isn't it? Bulwark. So, this is what is essentially bulwark that is how it is named. So, if you look into this you can see this structure, uh, this, partic this particular plate is the bulwark right. I do not know whether you can make it out if I show you. Um, can you correlate the picture I drew? This particular plate is the bulwark plate, and this particular bracket, which is supporting the bulwark, is the bulwark stay. That is what is referred to as bulwark stay. It's making the bulwark stay at its position, right? This is your deck, the deck of a ship, right? And here you have the side shell terminating here. There is a gap in between, this gap is purposely kept for simple reason the water should drain out, right. So, this is what is your bulwark stay, right. Then, uh, next we will see, we had been talking about double bottom, we had been talking about floors, right. So, this is a typical section of course, the double bottom what we have seen, we have drawn there we have seen only uh, well the bottom shell right and we have seen the tank top plating. Now, here it is a some special purpose vessel where they made some additional structural arrangements that is not, not I mean for some functional requirement these changes have been done. Otherwise, this is your double bottom, forget about what has been shown here as a separate member, but you can see these are the longitudinals, inner bottom plate longitudinals, right. Here a section, the bulb sections have been used, bottom shell also some of the longitudinals are visible, right. Bottom shell is also longitudinally stiffened, right. That is what is longitudinal stiffening arrangement, okay. Here one plate which is not very clearly visible that is my side girder, one of the side girder right. And see this part, well here somewhat changes have been done, but otherwise this is what is the floor. You have those big openings, small openings for some reason the openings have been made in this way. The whole purpose of these openings are essential to make the structure lighter, right. Now, lighter means if you cut further it will become further lighter of course, but at the same time you lose strength. So, obviously, a, uh, what is done is you generally cut the material nearer to the middle plane of the plate because that contributes minimum to the section modulus, right. Generally it is done so, which here you can see all these holes are cut almost at the mid depth region, right. So, thereby you make the structure lighter as well as you provide for a uh, pro provide for continuity within the tank because these are all basically used for tanked space right. 
or carries of ballast water or fuel oil or whatever. So, there should be flow of liquid. So, that helps this this whole uh, openings that uh, helps that. Now, you see these some vertical members can you see that this vertical members connecting the top longitudinal that means the tank top longitudinal to the bottom longitudinal. These are struts nothing but struts the whole function of this is to strengthen the float floor plate because you can imagine the floor plate this is in the transverse plane the floor is in the transverse plane these are the longitudinals in the longitudinal direction right. Now this floor plates the loading of the floor you can see it is under compressive loading the loading coming from the tank top whatever cargo will be kept there over this tank top right and load from the bottom shelf that is basically your uh, uh, pressure of water buoyancy force right. So the plates will be in in plane compression now if it is in plane compression unless they are not stiffened in that plane it will buckle for that purpose this uh, struts are there their basic function. So you can see the struts are stiffening the floor floor is stiffening the double bottom double bottom is stiffening the whole ship it is that way right. So these are basically struts and now as you can see the spacing between the these longitudinals is what we call frame spacing right they are equally spaced whatever is the frame spacing that is how they have been spaced. And then the struts are also connected on those frame spacing that means you do not fit any stiffener arbitrarily these are all in for all practical purpose stiffness will be located uh, uh, I mean the spacing between the stiffness will be either equal to that of the frame spacing or multiple of frame spacing for some specific requirement at some specific location you can have in between some stiffener otherwise everything will fall in line with the frame spacing like you can see here also the struts are there it is connected to the top longitudinal and to the bottom longitudinal why it is connected because that gives a better end connectivity better end connection the load path becomes uh, well I mean the uh, load flow becomes better right. And also you can see the there is some upper deck here some deck whatever it can be upper or some lower in between deck these are my deck longitudinals the spacing of them is also same that means if I cut a vertical plane here you will find this longitudinal is coming then this then the strut and then the bottom longitudinal if a vertical plane cuts across the length of the ship all will be in one line. Similarly if I cut across a transverse plane also this thing will be in one line see the deck transverse right it has a much higher scantling much higher depth compared to the longitudinals see it is supporting the longitudinals side shell is also longitudinally stiff and here you can see the longitudinals running there. So you have this again a wave frame supporting the longitudinals right. So you see here you have the deck transverse the wave frame and in the same plane this floor right that is what I was saying that it will come the floor wave frame deck transverse it will go in the same plane. Now here you can see the entire hull is longitudinally stiffened the deck is longitudinally stiffened entire side shell is longitudinally stiffened of course this part of the side shell we are seeing here the double bottom is longitudinally stiffened that means it must be a vessel where only liquid is being carried it is basically a uh, oiler a oil tanker not a huge one but a medium sized. So a medium sized oil tanker is called oiler I mean these spaces will be used for probably some liquid carriage etc. As I said that had it been a general cargo ship so you can feel if the side shell is longitudinally stiffened you see here the side shell is longitudinally stiffened then so much of space is wasted right that means for cargo storage you have space from here to this place right. But the depth of this from the shell to this that space is wasted if it is general cargo ship there is a reason why in general cargo ship we do not have uh, 
longitudinal stiffening in the side shell because if you have longitudinal stiffening you have to have transverses at interval trans transverse frames wave frames at interval which will support those longitudinals right. So this is what is the uh, arrangement of uh, well the double bottom you can see uh, longitudinal stiffen deck longitudinal stiffen side shell deck transverse side shell wave frame we call that wave frame right plate floor and then here these two faintly visible two members can you see them there is one and this is another there is the bracket floor there are the bracket floors okay it has been cut like this not necessary I could have kept it straight there is no harm the whole idea is it is just only a bracket right the bracket bracket floor connection means something like this. the last two longitudinals as you can see right and here you have this the kind of connection they have made something like this right instead I could have also say this my tank top well little drawing enlarged view bottom shell the uh, bracket floor could have been like this also this is my bracket floor it could have been this also anyway here what what they have done is that they have further made it lighter further made it smaller by cutting a part of the plate here that is all there is no specific uh, requirement as such I can as well keep it straight okay and also now this is what is the bracket floor concept of bracket floor it is nothing but it it connects the immediate two longitudinals that means this corner part right is further stiffened that means you have this floor at intervals at interval of 4 or 3 frame space at an interval of uh, as far uh, AVS it says that it cannot be more than 3.65 meter the spacing between transverses spacing between plate floors cannot be more than 3.65 meter. So if you have a say frame spacing of say 800 millimeter that means what 4 frame space makes you 3.2 meters. So you, you can have every fourth frame a transverse or a plate floor right. So that is what it is these are there and in between frames you have this bracket floor arrangement. Now again this bracket floor means nothing but a piece of plate which is connecting the inner bottom plating the well the bilge plating here basically it will come in the bilge end only and the two immediate longitudinals longitudinal of the inner bottom plating and the longitudinal of the bottom shell plating. So it is connecting and here you can see something not very clear that is nothing but again a stiffener because your this thing can be this plate is getting under compression this bracket may buckle. So to stiffen it well a stiffener has been provided but here you can see uh, as I was telling you that uh, all stiffeners or members are generally placed uh, on some frame spacing or multiple of frame spacing but here it is not so because this space itself is only one frame space right. So within that this plate has to be stiffened so you just provide a at certain angle a stiffener 
just to and this stiffener is also it has the same function as that of a what do you call a uh, strut it's basically a strut okay so well maybe next one let's see same thing uh, the same picture well a little maybe certain things a little clearer yeah yeah kill 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 blocks are not, not very visible here it is sitting on the kill blocks this is what is is one one block has been erected you know I mean one block means as we said when you do the construction say your complete ship may look something like this. say it is going like this. Now, the whole ship uh, how do you build where from you start like I said we start with the plates and profiles sub assemblies assemblies right and then units then blocks like that. So, this is one of that uh, one of that uh, semi block unit and block in between you can say or a unit you can say. A, a, a not not the full full generally conventionally block is the full section say this is one block means you you have the entire section the up to the top deck that is the bottom shell and this is my top deck right up to the top deck you have the so that is what generally is referred to as block that means a full part of a ship the superstructure block the entire superstructure right aft end block the entire aft end with all fittings right. <coughs> so, here well the picture what you are seeing it is not necessarily a full, <coughs> but it is probably up to this much that means a unit quite a big unit because whether you will fabricate the whole block or what size of unit you will fabricate that will again depend on your handling capacity because this has to be physically shifted and put in the erection bath right. Anyway, so here once again we see all those uh, uh, the, the structural items and here not, not very clearly seen, but you can see there is an opening in the floor and through which they are penetrating through the longitudinals same thing in the transverses maybe some picture will have where it to be little better there is a closer view of the same thing a closer view of the same thing you can see those charts the long channels there is the opening cut in the floor plate through which it is passing through these are the uh, two bracket floors right two bracket floors the bracket bracket that bracket floor it's itself is stiffened by a uh, strut right that way this is one of the dull bottom unit right just the dull bottom unit inner bottom plating bottom shell plating and here this is a floor but you see there is no opening at all what a tight floor water watertight floor because you have the ships uh, well as you know the well the dull bottom is there and the ship is uh, divided in various compartments watertight compartments right that means each of these compartments are individually watertight or in other words any damage in any compartment the flooding whatever will take place will remain confined to that compartment that will not spread to the other compartments that means what these bulkheads should be able to withstand that force right. So, obviously where I have the bulkhead watertight bulkhead just below that I should have a watertight floor then only I divide the whole ship in individual watertight compartments because the ship in between is divided by uh, by this what you call uh, tank top or the inner bottom plating by 
in two spaces are the hold spaces and the double bottom space. So, what happens this part is the bulkhead and then the bottom part is the floor is the watertight floor right. So, this is my watertight floor this is not a bulkhead what you see here it is a it is a watertight floor basically and since it is a watertight floor. So, you do not have all those lightening holes and all that it is all closed of course, it does have those struts on the other side it is there you do not see this side means they are there on the other side right. And here you can see the entire shell and the inner bottom plating is longitudinally stiffened this is longitudinal framing system everything is longitudinally stiffened because in dull bottom it is preferable to have longitudinal framing system. So, whole thing is longitudinally framed that means this floor will have uh, cuts openings through which this longitudinal will come, but then subsequently they will be blanked off by so called collar plates, because you will need to have the openings otherwise you cannot run the longitudinals right, because the longitudinals are not terminated there, they are running continuously. So, there will be opening through which the longitudinals will be there and then they are sealed off by uh, pieces of plates which are referred to as collar plate right. Another thing you can observe the color of this steel plate it is quite nicely uh, I mean not red reddish brownish color what is this painted. it is painted it is painted by a primer coat this is what is called primer coat primer coat means the paint should have a quality which will not interfere other fabrication operations because now the thing is under fab, uh, at a fabrication stage right it is not the final product it is a fabrication stage. So, you will have fabrication operation like thermal cutting will be there welding will be there. So, if I now paint it with the with the final coat of paint or such paints which uh, if I subject it to welding or thermal cutting that may uh, adversely affect the process because it will give rise to gas and there will be porosity in the welding right. So, this is a kind of paint which is referred to as the primer coat generally zinc based primer coats are used. Uh, steels I mean before you put to use for fabrication their surface is cleaned those things little more in detail we will take in uh, later lectures. The surfaces are cleaned of uh, whatever rust or mill scale whatever is there and they are subsequently I mean the moment they are cleaned immediately they are protected by a coat of this primer paint primer coating and uh, its color is somewhat like this. So, it looks so nicely I mean the whole purpose is this primer coat should be able to protect the plate till the fabrication is over that means it should have enough life so that it protects the steel from further corrosion and rusting till construction is over and you give it a final coat of paint. Well, these are uh, some of the close up views here is the side shell longitudinals right. It is a longitudinal framing system this is a this is the side shell it is the four part which is becoming V. You imagine the four sections of the ship right. The four four sections if we draw the four sections have become like this sharply V type. So, this is my one of the uh, I mean in the four section where I have the side shell longitudinal stiffened right side shell is longitudinal stiffened and you have this uh, what do you call uh, no this is the wave frame side shell wave frame is going like this side shell wave frame this stringer will be this is a section 
now maybe this is a fourth part right stringers are in this plane this is my stringer and they are running up to the four peak bulkhead on the side shell what I am drawing here is a section here let us assume the section here is becoming quite fine right and well it has uh, longitudinal stiffening so it goes like this and it, since if it is longitudinal stiffened then obviously you have to have at intervals transverse frames to support the longitudinals because the longitudinals are running like this this is my well these are the longitudinals if the side shell is longitudinally stiffened it will look like this is not it it will run along the length this green lines all along the length and then you will have to have this transverses at intervals side shell transverses side shell wave frames rather I mean deck transverse here you will have the deck transverse and here you have the side shell wave frame and here you have the deck transverse right. So that is what you can see the deck transverse is this right and this is the side shell wave frame. this is forming a ring at the below you will have the plate floor right and other frame space you see like in the double bottom you had bracket floor that means instead of the entire floor only end bracket same thing at the top corner this top corner here you see the brackets that means this is my frame spacing. So, here you can see one in between there is another that means every every third frame they are putting a wave frame this is a side shell right this is some deck is there which is also longitudinally stiffened side shell is also longitudinally stiffened. So, the immediate two longitudinals of the deck as well as of the side shell they are connected by a bracket. S similarly as that of a in the double bottom similarly as that in double bottom like I will show you say say it is like this right now in way of a section taken in way of bracket floor section taken in way of bracket floor what you will see we will see the bracket floor like this with this red lines I am drawing the bracket floor also I can provide a small opening there I mean a lightening hole similarly here you will have you see this this is referred to as bracket floor but it is essentially two pieces of plates this together this arrangement is bracket floor arrangement 
like plate floor you have a literally one plate which has all sorts of those cut openings as you have seen right. But a bracket floor is not one piece of plate it two pieces of plates actually. These two taken together it derives the name bracket floor they are essentially brackets. So essentially bracket floor is an arrangement is a bracket floor arrangement there are two pieces of plates one at the central line connecting the immediate two longitudes and the central girder another at the corner connecting the two longitudes one of that of the bottom shell and the inner bottom plating and this corner. Assume that the side shell is longitudinally stiffened. So in this plane when where I have in bracket floor also I have a kind of a bracket arrangement here. like this another plate welded at the corner right. So these are welded to the deck to the wave of the uh, deck longitudinal here to the wave of the side shell longitudinal and to the side shell they are welded right. So this is what would be the arrangement in way of in between two floors or in between two transverses this is the arrangement and with where there are there the transverse will come then the arrangement is like as you can see this is the wave frame of the side shell this is the deck transverse right they are connected here and this is another small piece of plate is nothing but another additional bracket to make the connection between the transverse as well as the side shell wave frame more stronger better connection. So another bracket is welded another piece of plate with flanged in the end is bent means it is giving a flange. So thereby it is providing further stiffness of that bracket. So it is just only to enhance the connectivity between these two. So this bracket is connected right. So that is basically is the idea that means such ring structures will be there at every 3, 4 frame space and in between you will have this arrangement that means only at the corners you put the brackets because these corners are more vulnerable. So load path is being implemented basically whatever load is coming on the deck is getting transmitted to the side shell. So it is helping in the transmission process you assume this bracket is not there. So as if the deck the entire load is being transmitted through this joint at the corner is not it only then this joint of the deck to the side shell. So what would have happened this is the side shell this is my deck plate it is welded here. So only that part instead now I have a I, I take take help of, of of this another additional plate which contributes to the further connection which contributes towards the load path whatever load is coming it gets transmitted better. Same thing whatever load is coming here getting transmitted better to the bottom shell right. This is actually a picture of you can see from one this thing opening you can see some other member inside. It is like this it is a uh, case of um, well a, a uh, what do you call a floor bottom shell longitudinals starts and here this is perpendicular to the plane of this if you can make out this inside red one that is a side girder a side girder it is right this is a floor this is a side girder means you have the
see your double bottom right and then you have longitudinals bottom cell and inner bottom longitudinals you have a side garter this side garter this side so the floor is there here you have the center garter right so this plate is the floor the transverse floor with the struts the struts you can see there there the struts welded to the inner bottom plating as well as to the bottom plating and you have these openings for the floor and there is the perpendicular to this is a side girder this vertical line this is going along the length is not it this is in that fashion along the length and side girder is also as I said is generally not watertight there is openings are there. So, these openings I can see also they it will have its own stiffening arrangement of struts following the same logic as as that of the floor. So, it is one of those uh, picture which is showing this. So, these are some of the things we, we have huh. generally side girder is not a watertight girder a center girder is generally watertight why because then you have a port side tank a starboard side tank <coughs> right because what happens if you see a section a full section say this is my double bottom you have a center girder. So, in that case you have a port tank a starboard tank port starboard you know I believe right say this is my starboard tank and this is my port tank. So, they are well independent tanks I could have made it one tank also that means could have made a one free surface, but you know you you will learn about that that if any in any floating object there is a free liquid surface that adversely affects the stability stability of that floating body you know any floating body should have should be in a what in a stable equilibrium position otherwise if it is not stable then what may happen if there is any untoward healing moment. So, it will continue to heal if it is in a unstable equilibrium position that means when it is just floating upright it is stable means it is in equilibrium, but if it is an unstable equilibrium give a healing force it will continue to heal till it capsizes. So, anyway those things you will learn. So, there you will see that a free water surface that imparts instability or reduces the stability parameter it imparts uh, I mean it may may affect the stability to that extent that the floating object becomes unstable right. So, having a free surface one will have to be very careful one have to have prior information about that that means you will have to whenever you are designing any tank meant for carriage of liquid you have to check whether the free surface effect is not adversely affecting your stability. So, that is one reason we, why this center girder is always made watertight thereby automatically I break the one wide free surface into two small free surfaces 
because effect of individual this is not the same as that of one okay so that is how that is why you will see in tanker oil tanker when you will see the midship section we have longitudinal bulkheads till now we are only talking about transverse bulkheads we are subdividing the vessel in transverse i mean along the length right by transverse at by transverse planes transverse bulkheads in case of oil tanker will be dividing longitudinally by longitudinal bulkheads for this reason anyway so generally the central girder is watertight and if there is any side girder right they are generally not watertight there is no rule that you cannot make watertight if you make watertight then again this becomes again smaller tanks say there is some requirement that you will have to divide this space in two individual tanks provide a watertight side girder nobody stops you and the whole point of providing non watertight side girder is it is lighter because you will have big big openings you make the structure lighter you save material I mean save weight you do not say material as such save weight right and the purpose of side girder is fundamentally as a stiffener how many side girders will be there it is dependent on what is the breadth of the vessel if the breadth is less than something then no side girder is needed breadth is less than uh, greater than this but less than something again one each port starboard and so on these are all structural requirement because they are providing strength right so that is what is the side girder again get back to this uh, first uh, slide well here uh, I thought there will be one uh, these simple things uh, may be of interest or here if we see a little close up of the construction it is always like this the deck this is my deck plating right this is the side shell plating this part of the side shell is referred to as shear strike shear strike this particular plate is has a special significance this symbol what I have drawn maybe you can see a little that shows this is the seam line seam line or butt line whatever the welding line shear strike is being connected to the the plate below hmm? uh, no 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 though, though I have drawn shear strike cannot be connected to bilge plate shear strike will come to the side shell plate and eventually to bilge plate this only I am enlarging that part right because your actually it would be somewhat like this say somewhat like this Th these are my welding lines the topmost is the shear strike that is also a part of side shell but a special name is given because that is the plate which is connected to the deck plating right shear strike also in the deck plate it will be several pieces of plates welded together is not it. So, this part of the plate is also has a special name stranger plate this is has nothing to do with the stranger you have seen in the forward end construction hmm? the stranger plate this is see a strike and of course then rest side shell plate 
right in the bilge bilge plate bottom shell plate then center plate in at the bottom cell is the keel plate right so they are named like this what is the speciality why stringer and sea strike different name has been given because that is the one of the most vulnerable joint where the deck plating is getting connected to the side shell plate because anything goes wrong in the deck say a crack has developed that crack may get propagated strike the side shell plate and then gets propagated through the side shell the whole ship will break in two. So, this is a very critical joint. So, one will have to uh, well that is to be taken special care of. So, always you will find the shear strike thickness, stringer plate thickness will be higher compared to the rest of the platings. You will find the plate will be of higher quality even means having higher uh, strength property, mechanical properties not only tensile strength, but impact properties it may have a higher fracture toughness property right all those things special aspects are there for the shear strike and that is why what should be the width of the shear strike is also prescribed that means you will have to keep minimum that much of width that is prescribed by classification society how much what would be the breadth of the shear strike plate some minimum is prescribed you will have to provide because that plate is a bit of special plate with uh, sp uh, I mean additional strength and uh, superior mechanical properties right. Anyway, so that is what is the shear strike and the deck plating uh, connection. So, here then you have what, what you call this uh, bulwark because bulwark is a is nothing but again just a plate right having some support at the top and is connected by it is like this. So, this is a bracket this is connected to the deck. So, this is a vertical plate this vertical line this vertical line is the this vertical plate which is the bulwark and this bracket as you can see this bracket right that is my bulwark stay. there is a bulwark stay right and here of course you provide a flange a double line indicates that it has been flanged at this end so that provides me the necessary strength stiffness of this bracket right so this is this bulwark now what i have drawn here that is what is important that means there is another line i have drawn here that uh, not very clearly, but somewhat visible something is there that means that is a doubler plate that means this stay is not directly welded to the deck plate. It is welded to a an additional plate has been welded to the deck which is referred to as doubler plate right. That means a additional small piece of plate is welded on top of that this bulwark stay is welded you can somewhat visible here this is a small piece of rectangular plate welded on the deck and this stay has been welded further on that can you tell me why this yeah it is not exactly maintenance problem what happens because this bulwark is on the deck right and now say in the event of cargo loading and unloading right this is like this you, you, you have the bulwark coming like this 
the whole purpose of bulwark is to provide support I mean it is for safety reasons for the personnel working on board otherwise they may fall off is not it. And now while uh, loading and unloading some cargo it hits this the bulwark it may get hit accidentally. So, the it may break off if it breaks off then it will tear off the deck plate if the stay is directly connected to the deck there can be a possibility that it will tear off the deck plate and deck getting torn off is a quite a serious uh, damage to the vessel which is not uh, sort of permissible right. So, that is why this is kind of a safety fuse you can say a safety device kind of that uh, if it hits it is likely that it will tear off the doubler plate and not the deck plate right. So, that is what I thought I will show you and these are other feedings and various sounding pipe etcetera any of those things we will see later. Let us see some interesting pictures. Um, oh, oh, what is this? So, here you can see this is a view in Sundarbans area right this small line you can see that is nothing but both sides is water and little bit of there are kind of a long narrow island you can say you can feel the breadth of the island it is not what calling island it is just <coughs> sand has got uh, I mean well some of the depth is not there at all some bit of uh, again if you go back you can see there is no island as such, but both side water. So, I am calling it as an island it is stones this side is the Shundarvan or the Haldia side whatever we will see even better. There you can see far away a ship lying there is visible broken two pieces right over that strip of land there in the horizon is the Haldia those petrochemicals right. Here you see the condition of the vessel this uh, this horizon is the Haldia see now this is a vessel of BIWTC Bangladesh Inland Water Transport Corporation it was carrying see what has happened it is a barge I think so it was it is a 6000 tonner barge not a very big vessel, but for inland thing it is sufficiently big and is carrying fly ash it is got grounded in this means in high tide it entered that and then for somehow the water receded it got supported in this reef in this uh, what I was telling a very narrow island kind of thing and see what it can cause. This is what is called grounding, grounding of a vessel. Grounding of a vessel means you have right. So, what is happening when it is floating? So, you have a huge buoyancy working here, and where it has got grounded the entire load works here okay. or sorry that is the opposite way I have shown the balance is working well the moment it gets grounded sorry I will just just the opposite way I have shown you the moment it, it has it has got grounded means the entire load is working downward. So, the reaction force total reaction force here you have the engine also you have the uh, holds are full right. So, total load is working like this with cargo. So, it is the worst case of loading and the result is this right. 
So this is what you can see. It is gone in the water. Both, both the sides. So you can see that that means the these are my those hatch combing stays. You can see this, right? This is the hatch combing. This is the hatch combing stay. So some crack developed at at the end of the hatch combing stay because those are the vulnerable points and that crack got propagated and torn off the entire side shell okay so this kind of disaster it happened just in the last month in july okay okay so we end here today next we'll take up container ship mm -hmm.